What's going on everybody? Today I'm going to be reviewing a game called the American Heritage Game of the Civil War. This game came out in 1961 and it is for two or four players. Now the object of this game is you are going to try to uh, beat the opposing army. In uh, this game you'll either be the Union side or the Confederate side. Um, you have uh, three different types of pieces that you're going to be using to try to defeat your opposing forces, the infantry, the cavalry, and some artillery. Um, you can also move around on trains, and there's a variety of little things that you can do in this game. This is a strategy game, and I'm going to go ahead and show you how it works. Okay, folks, as always, I'm going to go ahead and show you the components. Uh, the first thing we have here is the board, and this is, shows a partial map of the United States as it was back in those days. Um, of course, you have your dice over here. And you have three different units that I had uh, talked about earlier. You've got um, the artillery, which is your cannon here. Uh, you got your cavalry, which is the guy on the horse. And then you have your infantry, which is the guy with the gun. Now, if you look over here, there's letters on certain parts of the board, and each of them represent um, a different figure. So the cavalry would go here, the cannon artillery would go here, and the infantry would go here. And this basically is just going to be used to help you set up your pieces before the game starts. Um, now, the way movement works is you're going to be moving along this grid over here. You can move either up, down, or across. You cannot move diagonally. And you also have what's called these the railway. If you decide to use the railway, if you get a piece over here, you can go to here, then to here, then to here, or to here, etc. You also have some spaces on here that have mountains on them, and it's these spaces. If you end up landing on a mountain, that is going to end your turn, and you won't be able to move any further. You will be able to move off the mountain on your next turn. Here is how movement works. Each of these pieces uh, has a, uh, well, I guess you call it a move strength. And depending on what you roll on the die, you'll be able to move that many spaces. So let's say I went ahead and I rolled a 9. Now you can use this number to move as many different pieces as you wish with the number that you have rolled. And the way it works is the infantry can move one for every number that you roll. So if I have an infantry, I can go 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, or whatever. I can move 9 spaces with the infantry. In the case of the cavalry and the artillery, they can move two spaces per number that you roll. So, in other words, since I rolled a 9, if I wanted to move just the cavalry or the artillery, I would be able to move up to 18 spaces with them. So I could move this guy, like this would count as 1, this would then count as 2, and then I can move another artillery guy, or I'm sorry, a cavalry guy, this would be 3 and 4. Basically, you're just moving two spaces for every number that you roll and die. And the same goes with the artillery. And of course, you can do the same with the Union side too. Speaking of which, this is the Union side, this is the Confederacy side. So let's just go ahead and let's do a different basic movement over here. So let's say I went ahead and rolled a 9. And I went ahead and I decided to move this guy 2. And that takes up two of the moves. And this will go 3, then 4, then 5. And let's say I want to move one of the cannons. I could go 6, then 7, then 8. And then nine, and I would I could just stop on the mountain, and that would basically end my turn. So that's basically the way movement works. Now, if you decide to move on the rapid rails over here, each one of those is going to count as one move, no matter what this piece is. So if you had a infantry guy, you could go one, then two, then three, and that would count as three. And the same would be true with the artillery. This would be one, then this would be two, then this would be three. I um, mean, of course, the same would go with the cavalry. Now, if an opposing piece happens to be on a spot on the rapid railway, you will not be able to move there. To get off the rapid railway, you would simply just move your piece to the dot and then move to any adjacent square next to it. The way battling works is that you're going to be uh, putting pieces together in a single file line, like so, in order to do the battles, and you'll be kind of like this. Now, the battle points that each uh, piece has is different from the movement piece. The infantry has a power of two, cavalry will have a power of one, and the artillery, which is this, is going to have a power of two. And these all work a little bit differently. So basically what's going to happen is you're going to be lining these guys all up, and once you have like a formation like so, whichever side has the most points is going to win the battle and take the pieces. Um, now another thing to make note of is when you roll the dice and you make your move, the last, if you wish to do a battle, the last move has to be in this formation before the battle can take place. So you have to basically resolve all your movements first and then try to resolve your battle movement over here to get your soldier in. Let's just say I went ahead and I rolled a nine and I had my pieces. So I go one, two, three, four, five. And let's say I had a piece over here. I could go six, seven, eight, nine. 
Okay, so now I have my formation ready, and if you count up the points, these this side has six points because I've got three cavalry. This side has five points, so what's going to happen is this guy is going to jump, the guy in the back is going to jump over, and then these three pieces are going to be uh, eliminated. Now, if you decide to use a cavalry or cavalry in your attack, um, you're going to have to have a horse in the front uh, before you can attack with cavalry. Now, you can have more horses or more cavalry in the lineup, uh, but you have to have at least one in the front. And again, um, in this case, once again, the blue has more strength than the gray. So then again, in this case, the horse is going to jump over and take them over. Now, in the case of the cannon, the cannon can only be placed in the back. Uh, now, the unique power of the cannon is that um, the cannon will just simply fire and kill all these guys off, and it will not jump. And there's a significant reason for this, and I'll show you why this is. So the cannon, boom, shoots all these guys, and these guys are all eliminated. Now, part of what makes this game interesting is the way you set up your pieces. So let's, for example, say I had a setup of a soldier here and a soldier here. And let's say... I went ahead and eliminated these three people over here like so. Now I've got uh, two cavalry people right next to him in a battle formation. So on the next turn after my opponent has resolved his moves, I could take this piece out as well. Um, so in a way it's a little bit like checkers. You can also do flanking. Like if you have like a lineup of soldiers over here, you can get some soldiers on this side and uh, flank them on this way and then take out a piece like so as well. One other thing I needed to make note of is if you were in a position where you were trapped and you weren't able to move similar to something like this, then you're going to go ahead and die instantly. It's, you're not going to have to have a battle formation. So anyway, this is kind of how the game works. You're just going to be moving pieces around. You're going to be using the railway to move around, get your pieces set up. And a lot of this game is just kind of like checkers you're, in a lot of ways. You're just going to be trying to set your pieces up in a way to where you can jump over your opponents and take their pieces. But at the same time, you're having to defend yourself as well. So that's kind of how uh, this game works. Um, as far as my thoughts on this game, this isn't a game my wife and I play often. Um, it's, it's unique as far as the strategy goes. I can't remember ever seeing a game like this. So if you like strategy games, I think this is a game you would probably like. Um, the actual game, to my knowledge, is set up similar to the way it actually was back in the Civil War with all the uh, infantry and artillery as far as where they were and states and everything like that and the game actually comes with a pretty cool little booklet too about the civil war if you're into that kind of thing so if you like strategy games and you're into the civil war stuff this might be a game you might like um i would pick it up but uh the times my wife and i have played it we've enjoyed it so anyway that's my review